Your hair. Yeah. <laughs> is there a meaning behind your hair? Uh, no, nah, bro, not really. Um, I was just telling somebody, bro, when you when you get something from an artist or you're inspired by people, make sure you give them credit. When I was in school, bro, I was really into Drake, um, and he came he came out with a song with with at the time I thought was a band called The Weeknd. So I went on the internet and searched him, and that was this guy named Abel Tessafel, whatever, and he had this fade. Which I had at the time, I had a like a box top fade, mm. but this shit was nappy and it looked cool. And I was in school and I was trying to get holes by being different, you feel me? So I was like, shit, I'm finna just let my shit grow out like that and not touch it. And it's been like that ever since, bro. How long have you been growing this? What amount of time uh, is this that we see right now? This since 2012, bro. Six years almost. Yeah, six give years. Give or take? Yeah, give or take, yeah. Um, Will you, do you keep it cut at a certain length? No, nah, I don't. Okay. I tape it, you know, I get like little lineups and shit. How long do you think, or do you foresee yourself growing this for? Oh, for life, bro. I want my grandkids to like jump rope my hair and shit. Really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So no cutting? No cutting. Ever? Nah, I don't, I don't want to lose my strength, bro. Yeah. Now, is there a pet peeve with dreads? Um, For me, I don't like, uh, when people ask me stupid shit like, do I wash my hair, you know, or like ask me stuff like I'm nasty, like I'm a nasty person and shit, because my hair is clean, you know what I'm saying? I take care of my shit. It's just, it's not the norm or the um, the Western standard when it comes to dreads. Mm. What's something you've done to your hair that you'll never do again? Uh, like ever in life or yeah. cut it? I guess yeah. that, that <laughs> yeah, yeah. I didn't know if you had another answer aside from that, but nah, yeah, that answer yeah. fits. Okay. Now, um, something that I've been seeing is uh, guys rocking, men mm. rocking uh, fake locks. Oh, yeah. What is your opinion? <laughs> uh, Not something I've seen until recently, right. but I have seen it. Yeah. And um, I'm talking last year, two years, three years. What's your opinion of uh, men rocking fake locks i really don't have an opinion on there <laughs> i i really don't bro what about men coloring their locks oh yeah that's that's cool bro you know what i'm saying that's, that's cool i guess have you ever done that uh i mean for like a video we put like some fake costume shit in there mm -hmm. um but i i've always wanted to like dye my shit like um salt and pepper which is ironic because we just did that for the video i was an old guy but yeah i want my shit like salt and pepper um but I've kind of outgrew that phase right now. I think this is cool. Now, you did say in the beginning of this segment that your, I guess, I don't know, uh, your, your swag, your drip, you wanted a different look right. while you were in school. That's right. kind of like the lane you wanted to go. Right. What's the public reaction at this point? I mean, six years in, what's the public reaction yeah. you get it's, from strangers? It's Let's start with your city, in your city. What, what's the reaction you get? Oh yeah, it's definitely, you know, I'm, I'm the different person. I'm you a are. different guy, yeah, the different rapper. Like, uh, it started off in my city, and then like once I went to, uh, like I said, once the, the whites of my city started accepting me, I thought I wasn't gonna be different anymore. But of course I was still different. And then when, once I came to Atlanta, I thought, hey, everybody in Atlanta is different. I won't be different anymore, but I'm still the different guy. Even my music is different, so. Um, it's cool, bro. I feel like uh, the flash screen and TV was different when it first came out. You feel me? So, mm. That's cool. Now, little kids can be brutally honest. Yeah. What do they say when they see your hair? What's wrong with him or look at his hair? You know what I'm saying? Some people say it's cool. Some kids say it's cool. Some kids are scared. Like, my youngest son, I, I don't think he fucks me just because of my, my hair. You feel me? Really? Yeah, because we haven't really seen each other like that. Ah. And as of lately, when I try to, like, fuck with him, he doesn't fuck with me. He thinks daddy's a monster. How do you cope with that? How do you react to something like that? Wait, what? Like even, you know, your son thinking you look like a monster. I don't know, bro. It's, it, to me, it's cool. You feel me? Because I wanted this look. Like, I remember when my hair was short. And I used to be like, bro, I can't wait till my hair looks like this. So, ah. you know what I'm saying? It's just part of being Bob, I guess. Now, uh, what about as far as judgment, stereotyping, profiling, discrimination? Has there been a worse instance of this that you faced uh, because of the hair? Yeah, I, 
I used to work at Marshalls before I um, quit to do music. And I was like the best worker there. And I remember my manager used to tell me all the time, like, Chris, we want or we want to uh we want to make you a manager like really, really badly, but we can't because of your hair. Mm. And it was it was it hurt me because like Marshall's um well where I was working at our main demographic was white people. And when they came in there, those were the people who loved my hair. But it was like my black employees, like coworkers who talk shit about my hair. You know what I'm saying? So it was really um, weird. Um, and I never got that position that I really, really wanted. And I think it is because of the hair. Mm. But hey, fuck it. I'm here doing an interview with DJ Smalls. Uh, did you end up uh, quitting, getting fired at some point over there? Yeah, which is crazy, bro. I wanted to quit so badly to do this, um, but I couldn't. And it was just funny. I had got like employee of the quarter, I think like maybe the week before. Um, and I used to walk and catch the bus to work. So I had like a lot of tardies and shit. And my, my boss called me in, the office was like, um, you're a great worker, but your tardiness have caught up to you and we have a rule and I can't bend it. So you have to be let go. And she like, she didn't even know I was smiling like so hard on the inside. And really I was scared cause I didn't know what the fuck I was going to do. I had a kid, you know, a baby moms and everything at the time I was taking care of. I didn't know what the fuck I was going to do, but I was really happy. You know what I'm saying? Everything has worked out since. Mm. Now, uh, if you would have gotten that higher position, what yeah. difference in pay would have, w at that time, yeah. would you have would you have gotten? Was I it a significant difference? Yeah, in I would have been like, maybe like uh, nine or ten dollars. Yeah, I think when I left, when I was first started working at Marshall, it was like seven dollars and something. And when I left, it was like maybe at eight. Eight dollars, you feel me? Retail is very competitive. Like, bro, you can be stupid as fuck and go work in a factory and make twelve dollars. You could be you could be the president and work in retail and make minimum wage. You know what I'm saying? It's very competitive field. Was there ever a thought? And this was at that time when you had a job. Yeah. Was there ever a thought? Maybe I may have to cut my hair to make money. No, because I I knew I wanted to do this. Because every day I left work and I walked home. I got. I went in a room with my with my with my cousin, and we worked on music that nobody heard ever. You know what I'm saying? For hours until I fell asleep, because I knew I was gonna be bald in one day. Feel me? And I told my manager that. I always told her I'm not cutting my hair. So my music career, she always laughed and looked at me like I was stupid. But she knows me now when I walk in the store. That's Bob Lennon. So I take it no regrets uh, as far as the hair. Oh, no, no, no regrets. The reason I really never cut my hair, um, like I said, I grew up with my grandparents, bro. And uh, I remember I was watching Dolph documentary. He talked about how he never wanted to disappoint his grandmother. And I, I felt really connected because that's how I was. Like, my grandmother was a school teacher. And, like, when I was around her, bro, I talked really proper. And I made sure I never cursed and never let her down. Like, even when I was in school, bro, like, she never whooped me. Like, if I got suspended and she came to pick me up, she never whooped me. But just the, the fact that I let her down would disappoint me. But when I came home from school, bro, and I had this hair, and I kept going, my grandmother never asked me to cut it. Like she never said, Chris, can you cut your hair? So when everybody else would say some shit, I would be like, fuck you, bro. My grandma never said anything. That's like my baby. So she never said anything. Your opinion definitely doesn't matter to me.